Hey guys, it's Kim here and welcome back to my top five games of 2015. I am joined today by Mr. William Strife. How are you doing, sir? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm fine. I just woke up for so, this. So well, Strife, what is your number five game of 2015? Um, it would have to be Zombie Army Trilogy. Okay. It's a third person shooter based on uh, Sniper Elite. When you say it's based on Sniper Elite, is it made by the same people? I, I don't even know if it's made by the same people. I know that it's made on pretty much the exact same engine with no changes to it. Like not even any changes in the gameplay. Because unlike most zombie shooters of any type out there, it's strictly... I'm mean, like, it, 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 it functions just like Sniper Elite. You know, your main weapon is a sniper wep sniper rifle. You can carry crap loads of uh, ammo for that. And then you've got like all these sidearms and you can carry pretty much junk for ammo for those. Mm -hmm. So there's this, there's this super high focus on being able to uh, snipe people because that's all you really ha ha can carry any significant ammo for. But mm -hmm. um, like the, it's got this really, really sweet kill cam and there's a, actually a campaign to it, which is more than I can say for some games that come came out this year. <laughs> um, so, I, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. It's great fun blasting Nazi zombies. I mean, you can't get more evil than both a Nazi <laughs> and a zombie, because one wants to eat your brains, the other wants to either enslave you or kill you because you are not perfect in their you're eyes. <laughs> yeah, you're not them. So, you know, th that's just a combination of just like something perfect to shoot at and kill, so. And instantly, yes, it is made by the same guys as um, Sniper Elite. So it's their kind of like, I guess, Call of Duty spin-off, you know, when the Call of Duty decided that they were gonna do zombies more than the actual game. So that is your number five. So moving on, what is your number four game of 2015? Little indie title called Lethis, Path of Progress. Lethis? Lethis I have not Path heard of, of this. It, um, it is, it's, it's made in the vein of like old school city builders from like the 90s and mm -hmm. stuff, where it's like fixed camera angles. What really makes it stand out is its art. Like its art is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. In the in like the two or three weeks leading up to the release of um, another game that I was highly anticipating, I ended up logging <laughs> at like 15 hours into the game, which was yeah. That's a lot of hours for me to log into an indie game because I don't really dedicate to indies too much. But it was just really really fun ticking through all of the. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. it's got a campaign mission where it's like, okay, well, this is a new map and these are your limitations and these are the things you have to do. So you have to like balance between uh, trade and uh, exports and imports and everything to achieve some of the goals that the uh, the maps will impose on you. Like you gotta have one thing to, uh, you. there are all these resources and you have to get your citizens to upgrade their housing. And there are like eight levels of uh, housing quality in the game. No, it looks, I'm, I'm just looking at it now, it looks amazing. I really love the kind of sharp, crisp art style that oh, like yeah, you said. Yeah, and um, it seems to be a little bit steampunky as well, which is different to the usual kind of civilization style build build uh, sims. Yeah, it's uh, it takes place during a uh, the industrial revolution for the particular like world that they've created for it. And every once in a while you'll be tasked with, you know, s stupid, crazy, tributes that you have to pay to the king because it's still that awkward position between, um, you know, new government and monarchy or whatever. It's just really, really fun to actually go through the process of like, okay, well, now I need to start going into this resource and oh God, now the king demands a tribute of, you know, like some jewelry or gold, or mm -hmm. maybe, you know, he's demanding, you know, <laughs> that you export extra copper this year or something. And you know, so it, it, it creates a little bit mm -hmm. more of a unique situation over what you usually get with city builders, where it's just like, hey, build a city. And it's like, I loved City Skylines yeah. that came out earlier this year, but it was just straight up, you know, do your mm -hmm. own thing, have your own fun. And to that end, city builders get really old to me really quickly whenever that's the case. So Lethis was, it was a really big surprise to me whenever it came out. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a shot. And it took me months on end before I actually picked it up. Okay, so that's in at number four for you. So what is number three? Uh, number three would have to be The Hand of Fate. Okay. Have, did you ever heard it, hear about this I, game? I have not heard about this one either. You've gone for like super obscure stuff this year. Just like uh, Lethis, it was 
a game that I eyed up when it came out and I just never got around to it. And then someone else played it in this, uh, in the case of Lethus, it was Sips who played it. And I was like, you know what? I, I really need to go back and check that out. So uh, in yeah. the case of Hand of Fate, it was one that I was eyeing up really heavily, but I was just so busy. And then Duncan decided mm -hmm. to do his series over it. And whenever, yeah. whenever that started showing up and stuff in the subreddit, I was like, oh, that game. I need to go get that game. I completely forgot about it. <laughs> so I went back and I, I got it and oh my God, it, it's so fun. So the way that it works is that you are in a room with an old guy who looks like he's dressed up like a classic fortune teller. All right. Okay. And he is the dungeon master essentially. Uh -huh. So the, it, it's, it feels very much like a mix between a card game and Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Uh, okay. It, it, it's a mix between a card game, a board game, and Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, like that's okay. that's the overall way that it works. So what happens is you go into the game, and the dungeon master there will deal the cards out. So there are these encounter cards, mm -hmm. and those are taken from your deck randomly, and they're laid out on the table in front of you like squares on a board uh, to to a board game. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it could be, they could be laid out in a ring, they could be laid out, you know, like in a T-shape or something, or, you know, some very unusual uh, layout of cards. So you have a token and you start at one end or in some location and you move your token from card to card and each card is an encounter, okay? So mm -hmm. it could be, you know, there are like incidents where you can go into a tavern and start a brawl with someone who, you know, is yeah. like boasting about how they got all this treasure. Uh, <laughs> Whenever you have one of these encounters, uh, the dungeon master, if it's going to be like a combat encounter, the dungeon master will then pull, you know, X number of cards uh, about for battle, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't remember how it chooses it, but it, it decides how many enemies you're going to have to face, and then it'll pull cards out of the uh, deck, and it's based on the suits that you get in a standard deck of cards. So. Yeah have this encounter and he'll pull out these cards and it'll be like the six of dust. And it's like, great, that means that you have to go up against six bandits. <laughs> so right. gotcha. then it launches you into this tiny, like kind of stripped down real time combat experience. And okay. you go into it and you can dodge, you can defend with your shield if you have one, and you can attack with your sword or club or whatever it is that you have equipped. Oh my god, it, it, it was it was so fun. I spent a lot of hours on it. It's also got an endless mode beyond the story mode. And they're actually still introducing extra updates to the game to, uh, you know, new uh, new chains of cards for quests and whatnot. So what is it about the game that kind of really hooked you in for that many hours? Like, you know, cause I mean, it sounds absolutely amazing. And yeah, like when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, just a card game. I could just do that with the cards I have downstairs. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way you explain the mechanics and all that, it's so much more than that. But what is it that really kind of snared you and kept you coming back for more? It's probably the fact that it feels genuinely like you're actually playing like Dungeons and Dragons without needing to have another person. Because yeah. it's that, like, the pro one of the problems that Dungeons and Dragons has, at, just as at its at as a core mechanic, is that combat is kind of slow paced, mm -hmm. because you know it's all about dice rolls and you know there's yeah. there's no action just because of the way that it functions. It's it's all in your imagination and it you know depending on how skilled the the other people you're playing with are. Sometimes whenever big things happen in a D and D game. It, it can move really fast, but other times it doesn't. So the fact that you've got, you know, like this, uh, the the board system with the cards and then the randomization and, you know, oh, like, am I going to get a really, really good artifact? Do I, am I going to have enough gold? Uh, am I going to get blessed or am I going to get cursed type mm. stuff? Uh, the, the, the big randomization system matters a lot for it, but I really like the feel of like, oh, well, I know where I'm going. And, you know, and the way that the cards are laid out, there's a clear, th there's, there's an end somewhere, there's room for exploration, and I know that there's an overall goal with a boss somewhere mm -hmm. as well. And to top it all off, you know, the, the stories that they tell by unlocking further cards in, you know, like those chain quests and whatnot. Yeah. That's really what I find really, really fun about it. I, I, I intensely enjoy it for that reason. Okay, so moving on, what is in your number two slot? Wolfenstein, the old blood. 
Okay, do you have a thing for Nazis and zombies and Nazi zombies and Nazi zombie monsters? This this is actually the funny thing, okay? So, I mm -hmm. played a... I, the, well, for anybody who doesn't know, The Old Blood is like standalone DLC. Um, yeah. And it's like a short miniature version of Wolfenstein The New Order that was released like the year before, I think. Yeah, yeah, so, it was about a year ago. I played the New Order, and it's a good, solid shooter and everything. You I know? really enjoyed it, yeah. Um, but the old blood is just something that I didn't get around to, and I I think that there was a sale or something. I think it was the summer sale where I saw it, and I was mm. like, I forgot about that. I'm going to play it now. So I downloaded it, and I played it. I started it up, and I played it, and it was everything that the New Order was, but better. The New Order, like it was, it was a fantastic shooter, but it had it had its issues as far as I was concerned, mm -hmm. mostly concerning the story. As where the old blood was just like straightforward, it was like, nope, Nazis, you kill. That's it. It's a shooter. You're <laughs> you're you're big old beef stick, and you're gonna take a gun. You're gonna kill Nazis. Plain and simple. What could be wrong with that? And also, you know, given uh, you know, not to spoil anything for anybody if they want to get into it, but mm -hmm. um, the old blood is it's got a nicer story to it because it doesn't feel as um desperately sort of yeah um, desperate we'll just leave it at that yeah, it doesn't feel as yeah, desperate think, um yeah so the the old blood is like a prequel it takes place before uh the introduction in um oh, okay, the new order yeah. so it mm -hmm. basically uh the you know the new order starts with you assaulting a castle in a in a you know a yeah. really big effort by the allies to take on the nazis in wolfenstein the old blood you are you're tasked with getting the information to make that first assault possible right so that's okay. the whole yeah, story sense, yeah. of the old blood and then and this is the crazy thing i think that they outright advertise it this way but i didn't look at any of the advertising for the old blood okay. because i yeah. was playing through it and i was like yeah i'm killing zombies this is a lot of fun and then i got so far into the game and it was like guess what happened they unleashed a virus and i was like oh, nazi zombies i didn't see it. like it, it's so trite but i did not see it coming it just yeah. happened all of a sudden i was like this is insane i did yeah. not expect this so <laughs> Oh, I love it when that happens, when you just totally don't like follow advertising or trailers or something like that, and then you get to a story moment, either in a game or in a film, and you're like, oh my god! <laughs> 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 so what is it between you and Nazi Zombies? Because that is two games this year that involve Nazis and Zombies I, I and Nazi this Zombies. Is, this is just my year for Nazis and Zombies. I think yeah. that's all that it comes down to. <laughs> so... Both so you're going to be pretty sad well. next year when there's not Nazi zombies. Well, I mean, crazy thing is, just last night, one of my friends, uh, he was playing World at War, which is mm. the game that oh, yeah. debuted the Nazi zombie craze for yeah. Call of Duty. And, like, I got into a half-hour uh, conversation with him about, like, well, I mean, there are other games that do the Nazi zombie thing. He's like, nope, World at War is best. Like, it did it the best. <laughs> Just nothing else did it better, man. It's just nope, nope. I'm not listening to your yeah, argument. You freaking noob. Like, yeah. Dare I ask, Will Strive, what is your number one game of 2015, and why is it Fallout 4? <laughs> Before we do that, I'm just gonna do two simple honorable mentions where I don't get into them. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna honorably mention Borderlands 2 because I've played way too much of it this year. I think I've put another 80 hours into that game. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm also going to have to give an honorable mention to the game Rebel Galaxy that I mm -hmm. just bought last night and I started playing <laughs> it and I just I'm um, seeing all of these hours dump into it. Just going. Just, uh, <laughs> it would probably be on my list if it wasn't for the fact that I'm just not going to be able to play it enough before doing the list right now. So Aww. Fallout 4. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> What, was there any question about this? I mean, really. I don't think there was. I'm, I'm, work, I'm, I'm recording with you right now about doing this, and as soon as I'm done, I have to set up a stream to do Fallout 4 for my viewers. <laughs> so, where to even begin? Like, I, I. It's too big, isn't it? It's just you can't approach it. You just want to grab people and scream at them, Fallout 4! And then like, you just, you know. Have, uh, so, are you playing Fallout 4? Yes, I am. But if we're gonna try, we're gonna try for no spoilers. I kind of have like an unofficial no spoilers type well, thing. I mean, um, really, it doesn't even come down to story. It doesn't mm -hmm. because um, one of the reasons that I play like this is this is just a Bethesda game philosophy mm -hmm. that I have, and it's like you know, I don't really care about the main story. Like in Skyrim, I have more than five hundred hours on Skyrim, the last game, mm. 
And I have only ever played the main quest once. Yeah. One time. And it's just like, no, nope, <laughs> there's, there's way too much in this game for me to do to bother with the freaking quests. Yeah. And part of that, like, part of that is the fact that Bethesda is not stellar at their writing skills. Yeah. Uh, that is something that you see across the board from the community. It's just like, yeah, the writing in this is so terrible. Like, the number <laughs> one complaint that I've always seen about Fallout um, since they took it over was that, like, the original ones were better for their story, or in the case of New Vegas, it was like f leagues ahead in story. And it's like, you know what? I'm not going to argue with that with you on that. But mm -hmm. these games aren't about the story. You know, Bethesda has never made games where it's like, yeah, no. story, story. And it's like, no, this isn't Bioshock. All right. This is <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Bethesda's version of Fallout or, you know, the Elder Scrolls. So you can explore the world as you choose. You can you can do what you want. That's really what it comes down to. You can do what you want yeah. as soon as you, you know, exit the vault in Fallout 4. It's just like, hey, you want to go north? Well, good luck. You're right next to the edge of the map. But yeah, you can go north if you want to. <laughs> so you can go anywhere you want. You can do anything you want. You can go straight into the areas you're not supposed to right away because the game doesn't restrict you. And... You know, you can ignore the main quest and you can do all the settlement building and collecting and leveling up and just um, the most important component of it all, I think, is just the collecting of stuff mm. where it's like, you know what? I, I just want to go and try to find bobbleheads. So that's what I do. Or, you know, it's just I am going to get all of my magazine racks in the garage full of magazines. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to find all the freaking magazines in this game. Oh my and God, I didn't even think about that. I've, I sold them. <gasps> uh -oh. oh no. Kim. Oh no. no. Yeah. In the, oh. <laughs> in the red rocket station, there's a magazine rack. And of course the there only is, thing you there? can put in those are magazines. You can, like, I'm on my third magazine rack now. Oh so. no. It's okay. I kept some of them. I sold like the tattoo ones. That's fine. No one wants tattoo ones. <laughs> like, that's fine. That's fine. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to go and do that as soon as we're done. <gasps> yeah. <sighs> but, okay, so here's a question for you. How do you feel about the whole crafting system and settlement building? Um, settlements are a little iffy on my side because, mm. like, I'm getting up to the point in the game where it's like, yeah, they're they're doing reasonably well or something, and now they're getting attacked frequently. Right. And I'm like, the settlement isn't gonna hold together unless I just drop everything I'm doing right now. Yeah. And go help them. And, like, it's it's an enormous problem because the groups of enemies that are showing up, they're starting to become more elite that right. attack the settlements. And it's like, I don't want the people to die. I don't want to have them. So the settlements in that factor alone where it's like, hey, somebody needs your help right now. <laughs> I'm like, it's but a, I was. It's a real shame you didn't help them. Oh, now they're all dead. And you're like, oh, can Oh. So it's like, I don't, I don't want that outcome. So it's like, I, yeah. I, I drop everything I do every single time. I'm like, this is, this is, fucking, oh, this is bullshit, man. This is bullshit. Yeah. So like, if there's anything that I'm going to end up downloading, it's probably going to be a mod to stop the settlements from being attacked. Yeah. Just so they can get out of my way and I can get to, you know, mm. the fun little micromanagement. Okay, so to recap, your five games of 2015 are in at number five, Zombie Army Trilogy. At number four, Lethus, Path of Progress. Number three is Hand of Fate. Number two is Wolfenstein, The Old Blood. And number one, of course, is Fallout 4. And I think we'd all be disappointed if you said anything otherwise. else. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> With, of course, Whoa. honorable mention of Rebel Galaxy and Borderlands oh, yes. 2. So. Of course, of course. And all those games actually came out this year. <laughs> I know, right? Like you're I think you're the first person to actually do that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I got people going for demos, I got people going for like betas and things like that. Cheats. Cheats the lot I of know, them. Right? If if, if it wasn't for that, I would probably put Overwatch up on there. But Overwatch isn't out yet. We can come back to that one next year, I think. Oh, I think we will. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Will. And as ever, you guys get involved as well. Let me know what your top five games are in the comments below. And have a very Merry Christmas. Farewell! Bye!